Hello everybody and welcome to Big Baby Props. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get from this raw 3D printed helmet to this fully finished, painted, and wearable Commander Wolf helmet. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is sand the edges of the prints. Sanding it is going to make uh, the edges a bit coarser and rougher and help our super glue here bond a lot better. We've also got some Gorilla Glue that we'll follow up with. And this is a piece of sandpaper glued to a flat board that's going to help us keep our edges nice and even as well as sanding across the whole edge. So go ahead and grab your first piece and just start sanding. You want to make sure and get all the edges that are going to be glued. Just get it nice and roughed up a little bit. Once you've got everything sanded, we can begin gluing. This super glue is pretty powerful stuff, so I only use about a drip every inch or so. You don't have to do the whole edge at once. Here I just do a section of about four inches and keep it aligned and then apply some pressure whenever the two pieces are aligned properly. So once you've got that done, we'll do the dome. This I think I do all at once just because it's easy to keep aligned and the bottom won't fall apart on me. So there we go. Our helmet's starting to look more and more like a helmet. And we're going to follow up our super glue with some Gorilla Glue. Uh, it's just another added layer of support. So just go on the inside and squeeze some out along the seams that we glued on. We're also going to add some to the antenna because it is one of the most fragile parts of this print. Okay, so our Gorilla Glue has dried, and now we're gonna add another layer of support to these edges here. We're gonna be using something called fiberglass resin. It is a liquid, it's a two-part liquid, part A and part B. Part B is a liquid hardener here. You mix them together and after about 20 minutes or so, the solution will harden and you'll be left with a solid. So we're going to mix them up, paint them along the seams, and that will give our helmet a little bit more support. So you only need a few drips of hardener for the amount that we have, but just mix it together for a few minutes and then you can start painting it along the seams. You'll definitely want to do this in a well-ventilated room or outside, and you'll definitely want to wear a respirator because this stuff smells like hell, believe me. We're also gonna paint some on the antenna rod because like I said, it's the thinnest part and we don't want that snapping on us. After the fiberglass is cured, we can start working on the outside of our helmet. One of the major drawbacks of 3D printing is that it leaves a bit of layer lines. So we're gonna use this filler primer to smooth out those lines and give us a nice and smooth helmet. This stuff is sort of like creamy spray paint. So we're gonna spray it around the outside and it's gonna fill in some of those lines for us. Get it to a certain amount where it's kind of shiny. See right there, it's a bit darker. Get it to where it's kind of reflective, that way it is actually filling in the print lines. Give it one or two coats, waiting for about 30 minutes in between coats for this stuff to dry. And this stuff takes care of the smaller print lines, but like our creases there, it won't fill in, so I'm not too worried about those at this point. Just give it one or two coats around the outside and we'll call it good here. Now that we've got some of the smaller lines filled in, we can start to worry about these big creases here. They're a little bit too thick and too deep to fill in with filler primer, so we're gonna use something else. We're gonna use this, it's called Bondo Spot Putty. It's like a, like a tube of toothpaste that you squeeze out and like the filler or like the fiberglass, it will harden over a certain amount of time, and then 
we'll be able to sand it and smooth out those edges. So just go ahead and apply a, a good amount alongside your edge here. What I like to do is uh, smooth it out with my finger a bit, make sure that it's nice and even. I feel like it helps cut down on some of the sanding that we'll have to do in the future. Just go ahead and do that around all your edges. We're also going to do it to uh, some of the parts that get a little choppy from the supports while they're printed. So just go ahead and apply like a you know a nice glob over it, and then we'll sand it, and that'll smooth it out. There's also a few lines visible on this top um, mohawk thing here, so we're gonna apply a few layers up there. and it's really going to help smooth it out when we're done. Also on the top of the helmet it gets a little bit layer liney so we're just going to use some of the Bondo to take care of the thicker stuff. Uh, don't be like me and accidentally fill in one of the detail lines with Bondo. There I had to grab a, a paper clip and dig some of the Bondo out. So there we go. Leave it to dry for a few hours and then we'll come back to it and sand it down. The most tedious step of this project is the sanding, so I hope you guys are ready for a lot of it. I like to start with 100 or 150 grit sandpaper to get some of the you know, heavy globs of Bondo smoothed down a little bit, and then I like to follow up everything with this 300 grit sandpaper to get everything nice and smooth. You'll want to wear a respirator or a dust mask when you're sanding all the Bondo because it makes a lot of particulates in the air. So just sand it down until it's nice and what you think is smooth, and then we'll move on. Odds are you didn't get it perfectly smooth on your first try, so we're going to use this black filler primer around the helmet, and it'll help us identify some of the spots that need a little bit more Bondo and a little bit more filler primer or a little bit more sanding. So just give it a complete coat. It doesn't have to be, you know, fully coated. All it's helping us do is identify some of the parts that need a little bit more work. So I can see there's still some parts that have some layer lines visible. Uh, some of the seams need to be worked on a little bit more. There's some lines on the face I can see. So we're going to add a bit more filler primer and do those last two steps again. Once the filler primer is on, we'll add a little bit more Bondo where necessary and then we'll sand again. At this point your helmet should be probably 95% smooth. Uh, I've gone through a few more times, added filler primer, sanded some more. So now we're going to start adding our white primer. This stuff is going to act like a base coat to our gloss primer that we'll follow up with later. Before we get to the gloss primer, there's some things we need to take care of on the helmet. Uh, through all our filler priming and bondoing, some of these detail lines have got filled in a little bit. And we want to make sure and keep those as crisp as we can. So I'm going to use this scalpel here, or this X-Acto knife rather, to dig out some of the filler primer and bondo that, that set itself in some of these layer lines. go along and trace out the detail lines it should knock some of the stuff out now that we've cleaned out those lines after we laid our white primer here we can start to lay down the uh, the white gloss this stuff is really going to make the helmet shine and give it that real clone armor you know shiny fresh off camino look So just go ahead and give it, you know, a light but 
full coat around the whole helmet. Once the gloss is dried, we're ready to start painting. So grab your blue painter's tape, some thin masking tape, and our X-Acto knife again, as well as some reference images to get the paint job right. What I like to do is on the outside lay your masking tape, that way you can get some of the finer details without using you know, a lot of tape, and then use the big painter's tape to cover up large areas. Once you've got, got it fully covered like this, we're ready to start painting. So go ahead and add a few coats of gray paint, being sure to get full coverage before you take the tape off. You really don't want to have to retape it, trust me. So give it a few coats, waiting about 20 minutes between each coat. Now you're ready for the most fun part of the whole process, which is peeling the tape off. I use our X-Acto knife to get under the tape and lift it up a bit and then use my fingers to pull the rest of it off. Trust me, this is as satisfying as it looks. So now that we've got our helmet fully painted, we're going to add something a little extra and install a visor. So some of the materials you'll need, you're going to need a visor obviously. Uh, a hot glue gun. And pen and paper. I also use a, a soldering iron in this step. But first, grab your sheet of paper, lay it around the inside, and we're going to trace out the visor size on the paper. This will give us a rough estimation of how much visor material we need. Also, instead of uh, visor material, a lot of times I like to use mosquito netting and layer it over a few times. It's a lot more available than a visor and it's a lot cheaper. So that we have our rough outline of our visor. We're gonna add a little bit extra around the outside just as a bit of leeway because we don't want to cut too little visor and have it not cover the whole thing. Go ahead and cut out your visor pattern with a pair of scissors and then we'll lay it over the, the visor material and cut it out. Instead of just tracing the, the circular oval pattern, I cut out a whole rectangle just because some of the bends of the helmet are a little bit trickier and it's easier to take away than to add more. So just fit it underneath the helmet, make sure it fit all there, it covers the whole eyepiece and then we're ready to start attaching it. Like I said, I used a soldering iron for this step. I used it to 
singe the outside of the visor into the helmet so that it has a bit more has a bit sturdier connection with the helmet. Then I use the super glue on top of it just to layer everything over. Here we have the finished helmet. Overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm gonna be keeping this antenna piece uh, detachable for now, just in case I wanna travel with the helmet, put it in a backpack or something. But uh, you guys are welcome to glue it in there if you like. All right, let's try this thing out. I don't know if you guys can hear me in this thing, but it looks pretty cool in there. Alright, if you guys want to make one of these helmets yourselves, be sure and check the link in the description. There I added a listing for the, uh, the original white helmet that we started with at the beginning of this video. Also in the description is a link to my website, Big Baby Props. There I did a write-up outlining all the supplies, materials, uh, some smaller techniques that I couldn't fit in the video, it's all written up in there. So be sure and check that out. If you guys like the Clone Wars as much as I do, be sure and subscribe. There's going to be a lot more helmet tutorials, army tutorials, weaponry tutorials, all sorts of tutorials on making Clone Wars gear and armor. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.